Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Banjo-Kazooie. But in this episode, we're going to do something a little different. As you can see, we're in the beginning area of the of the game, which is kind of surprising, obviously. But uh, I'm going to show you guys exactly where all of the honeycomb pieces are. So I'm playing on a new game, so this is going to be... It's going to take me a while to find all of them, but... I will show you guys step by step of where each of the honeycomb pieces are. So get let's get to it. Let's get to the montage. So the first set of six of the honeycomb pieces are actually in the tutorial area before you actually enter Gruntilda's lair. And each one of them is a tutorial with bottles and this is one of the first ones. Okay, so in the first area where these tree trunks are, there is a honeycomb piece here, and you want to do Banjo's backflip with Kazooie, and you get your first honeycomb piece. So the second one is when you learn how to swim, which you want to go down underwater. And we can continue to just swim around here. And in one of these lower areas, by this middle island, there's an alcove here, and underneath it, there is a honeycomb piece. And that's number two. So the next honeycomb piece is going to be on top of one of these trees. Which, this tree over here, by this field of flowers, by one of, other, one of the other uh, bottles' mohills, you could do a backflip, but I'm pretty sure you can reach it by just doing a simple jump with Banjo. And that's honeycomb piece number three. So the next honeycomb piece is going to be when you learn some of your basic attacks, which is the claw swipe with Banjo. And once you kill that one, you move on to the next enemy that you got to kill, which is the one with uh, Kazooie. The next move we learn is the roll, and we do it twice, just like with the first attack. And then the Ratatat Wrap, which is what Kazooie can do for her attack. And we do it again. And after that, we'll get our Honeycomb piece. And there it is. Honeycomb piece number four. All right. And then the Barge, which is this move, which we go and break these boulders, each one of these. And when we've destroyed every single one of them, we get the fifth honeycomb piece. Now let's go find that sixth one, shall we? So the sixth and final honeycomb piece in the tutorial area is actually across these platforms. So when you jump across, you can do your two normal jumps on these platforms, but the last one you'll have to do your double jump. And right here, you reach the sixth honeycomb piece. And there you go, you get your extra hit. Now the next set of honeycomb pieces, which there's two, there are two in every world that is in this game, which there are nine total. And I'm going to start off by showing you where the next two are, which will be in Mumbo's Mountain. So I'll see you guys there. So the first honeycomb piece in Mumbo's Mountain is by, is actually on this side of the mountain here. And it's a little tricky to get to. There's a couple ways that I've done this before. So you can either go at it from the side, because as you can see at the bottom left corner there, there's, a, there's an opening there where you can step on a platform. So there's two ways you can do this. One of the easiest ways is to line yourself up. You could do a jump here and lower yourself down here. And there it is. So the second honeycomb piece is going to be where these totems are. And you're going to need Kazooie in order to get the power where she can shoot eggs through her mouth. And you want to be able to get each egg through, except you want to leave one on the ground. For a very special reason, and I'll show you. Because when, when this is the last one spinning, you could see that a honeycomb piece is revealed. And you can't reach it without getting on top of this totem. And you want to do a backflip. And there you go, there's honeycomb piece number two. Let's head on to the next world. 
So here we are in Treasure Trove Cove, the second world, and I found the first one in the world, which it's kind of dangerous because if you fall into the water, a shark's going to come after you. And unfortunately, that's where one of the honeycomb pieces are. So if I go in first person here and go to the ledge, you see that there's a honeycomb piece there. So let's be careful. You can hear the music. But there we go. There's our first one. Ow. Ugh. So you want to get back to the shore as fast as you can. As <laughs> soon as you can. Ugh. It, it's actually not as bad as you think it is, but... Once you're out of there, you got your first honeycomb piece. So let's make our way to the second one, shall we? So the second honeycomb piece is another one that's in the water, but it's not actually underwater. There's... You can't see it in front, but from this... From this little island here that you can go to, where actually one of the jiggies shows up uh, after you hit some X's and whatnot, there's actually a wooden box that's out in the middle of the water. So you want to quickly rush to the box. And when you jump on it, you can do a normal jump or you can backflip, and there's the second honeycomb piece. And that's both honeycomb pieces in Treasure Trove Cove. So let's move on to the next world. So here we are in Clinker's Cavern. And in Clinker's Cavern, we are going to get on this grate here, which you're going to have to first uh, raise the water level by going all the way to the bottom there. And there's like a turn key. There's a key that you're going to have to go through the, the opening of, and it'll raise the water up for a Clinker, where Clinker will be above water which then his fin is going to be right there. And you'll be able to jump up onto this platform and you'll be able to use the jump ability that Kazooie has. Climb on that pole there up to the top and you'll make it up here, which underneath the first grade at the top there is a Jinjo. And then you can come slide down here or just do a big jump and make it onto this grate, which you can ground pound. And then inside is the first honeycomb piece. So let's go find the second one. So the second honeycomb piece is actually underneath here in this pipe, which you can probably get first, but I recommend being able to lift up Clanker first just so that we have access to other places. But it's totally up to you what order you want to do this. But over here on this side, underneath this pipe, there's going to be a hole here that you'll be able to get into. As you can see that I'm inside of it. I've actually already gotten this one, unfortunately, as I was trying to record this part. Because for some reason, Streamlabs was being silly. So, uh, But I guarantee you that is actually there. And that'll be your second or first, depending on what order you want to do it, honeycomb piece. So let's move on to the next world. So here we are in Bubble Gloop Swamp. And you're going to want to make your way through the maze here with the boots that Kazooie can get. And you'll only, you'll be able to learn these in the level themselves from uh, bottles that's near the beginning of the level. And then once you're up here, you can go inside of Mumbo's hut. Because what's very interesting is that the honeycomb piece is actually at the very top. So what you want to do is get on one of these poles here. So what you want to do is you want to just jump up, jump across, and there you go. There's honeycomb piece number one. And let's make our way to honeycomb piece number two. So the second honeycomb piece in Bubble Gloop Swamp is going to be where the tortoise is. And to open its mouth, there's going to be limbs here, his uh, arms and legs, that you're going to want to ground pound on when they're exposed. And when you do all four of them, his mouth will open. You'll also get a jiggy from it as well. But you can actually head inside of his mouth. And when you're inside, there's like this little mini game you could do to get another Jiggy where you, it's a memory game. But what's interesting is that in this room is at the top here of the podium. You could do a backflip and you run into a honeycomb piece. And there's another set of six. So I'll see you guys in the next world for the next two honeycomb pieces. So here we are in Freeze Easy Peak. You can tell by a lot of the snow and the giant snowman in the middle. But the first honeycomb piece is actually going to be among one of the snowmen that you'll be able to attack with the new ability that you learn by bottles over there by where the presents are. And you can fly up 
you'll be able to fly and do a dash attack in the sky. And there's little targets, little X's on top of their hats where you can hit them and uh, kill them. And once they're killed, there'll be stuff underneath them. So there, you'll find mumbo tokens. Uh, you'll find a grunty switch as well. And if you kill all of them, you get a jiggy. But not only that, but one of them that sits right here that I accidentally killed <laughs> is a honeycomb piece. And there's the first one of Freeze Easy Peak. So let's go on and find the second one. So the next honeycomb piece is actually going to be when you get the walrus transformation from Mumbo's hut in Freeze Easy Peak. And the only way to get into Waza's home is to be the walrus because he doesn't trust Banjo since he doesn't like bears. So you want to enter here and over to the left, you can go underwater and there's a little tunnel here. And you want to make your way all the way through. And when you reach the end, you come out to the other side, and lo and behold, there's a honeycomb piece. And there's the second one, a Freeze Easy Peak. And that's both honeycombs of Freeze Easy Peak. So let's go on to the next world and get the next two honeycomb pieces. So here we are in Gobi's Desert, the next world for the next two honeycomb pieces. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to head to one of these pyramids, particularly the one that has some stairs that leads up to one of these doors that looks like the sun. But you want to go behind the pyramid here because there's a switch that looks like a honeycomb piece. And you're running to ground pound it just like that. And guess what? A honeycomb piece appears in the middle of that circular cactus. And you're going to want to go to a fly pad for Kazooie, and you're going to want to fly through that cactus and grab your honeycomb piece. So the best place for that that I've seen is uh, by the Sphinx, or if you haven't filled up that middle part with the water, um, if you know what I'm talking about, then um, that that's another good place. Also, my health is low because I've been doing the world as well, but uh, I'll cut to when I actually fly through the cactus. So the tricky part with this cactus is obviously, you know, you don't want to get punctured. But there we go. We grabbed it. So you want to be careful. But there's our first honeycomb piece of Gobi Desert. Or Gobi's Valley, excuse me. <laughs> Gobi's Valley. Uh, so let's head on to the next one. So the second honeycomb piece is going to be where Gobi runs off when you stomp on his back the first time to help water the tree. And the way to get over here, there's two ways to get over here. You can either fly over here or you can take the magic carpet that like this and it goes around in circles it goes from here to the sphinx or jinxie to another side that you can climb on as well but what you want to do is get on his back again stomp on it and he spits out a honeycomb piece but oh, that's it i'm leaving this desert to find some peace and quiet all right bye goby but with that you get your second honeycomb piece of goby's valley and that's all of them so let's move on to the next world and get the next two honeycomb pieces. All right, here we are in Mad Monster Mansion. And in this one, there are two easy honeycomb pieces that you can grab. And the first one is kind of a trek, but it actually isn't that bad. So you, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to get the uh, speedy boots upgrade for Kazooie in Gobi's Desert before actually doing this because it's the only way to do it. So you see this button here, you want to smash down on it and that opens a door. And what you want to do is you want to be really fast. So you want to grab these shoes and run around the mansion directly to the door right over here. And you can make it within two seconds. I make it within two seconds every time. So what you're going to have to do next is you're going to have to climb all the way up on the organ, which there are many places for you to do that. There's the pedals on the bottom. There's a green jumping platform that has you jump up to the organ, and then you just climb up from there. And there's a flight platform just below there that I just used, and you want to keep flying up until you find the honeycomb piece that's just floating up here. Uh, it might take a few tries to get at least for me. But there we go. There's the first honeycomb piece. You also find yourself a grunty switch up here too if you are also doing a playthrough of this. But let's move on to the next honeycomb piece, the second one. So the second honeycomb piece is going to be using Mumbo once again. 
because it's going to be another one of these where we're going to have to turn into a, a very special transformation. Which in this one is a pumpkin. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to make your way back to the church as your pumpkin transformation. And there's a little hole here to the left. And you want to go through it. And right here, there's a ramp that leads you upward. And this window right here, which I've already broken open at the beginning since I was exploring this place and uh, re-grabbing all the notes and everything. But once it's broken open, and you have to do it as Banjo-Kazooie, you can't do it as the pumpkin because the pumpkin doesn't have any attacks. So what you're going to do is jump through the window. And in here, underneath the floorboard, is your second honeycomb piece. And that's another six right there. And that's another extra piece of health. Well, let's head on to the next world and we'll grab the next two honeycomb pieces. I'll see you guys there. So here we are in Rusty Bucket Bay. This is a little bit dangerous because the water here, it is quite deadly because your air meter will go down twice as fast. And it's, you gotta also be careful because apparently there's a shark in this uh, in this water in this corner here. So you want to go into this hole that's next to this underwater warehouse. And even though the water looks cleaner in here, it actually isn't. So you want to get out as fast as possible and avoid all these enemies if you can. But over here, if we make our way around as we kill these enemies and give me some health. There's a switch. This switch looks exactly like the one in Gobi's Valley that we ground pounded before. So we ground pound this one and it does the same thing. It makes one appear. And as you saw as we entered, there is a flying platform that we can use as well. And this is what we're going to be using to grab our honeycomb piece. Our first one. There we go. And there's the first honeycomb piece of Rusty Bucket Bay. Now, I'll go and show you guys where the second one is. So the second honeycomb piece is actually in one of the silos here on the ship, which the only silo that actually has a door that you can break open is this one, one of the very first ones that you actually come across when you come across the platform since the start's over there to the left. So we went ahead inside, and this actually takes us to the engine room. And you'd think that the honeycomb piece would be within the engine room, as in, like, where all the mechanisms are and everything, but it's actually at the door here. So you see that hole there? So you want to do a backflip inside of it and grab the second honeycomb piece, and there you go. There's both honeycomb pieces of Rusty Bucket Bay. So let's move on to the next world, and I'll show you where the next two are. All right, here we are in the final world, Click Clock Wood. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to climb up to the tree at the very top here. Well, not the very, very top, but uh, where the squirrel's house is when you first come across him. And there's a switch here, and when you ground pound it, which I've already done, it opens up the summer door. And going to the summer season in this world is very important, and I'll show you in a little bit. So during the summer, normally there is... So during the spring, there is this water that's actually all the way up, and we see that we have a beaver here that is needing some help because uh, his, this rock is blocking his home. So we have to open the switch to the summer door to not only get 100% in this world, but also for us to break the wall open. So we use the dash attack or the shoulder charge, and we break it open. But unfortunately... We're actually unable to get up to the top because even with Kazooie, we're unable to. And that part only comes during winter. So we have quite a bit in this world until we actually reach that. But for you guys, it'll be very quick. So I'll see you guys when we get to that honeycomb. So finally, we're at the first one in winter. There's going to be a little hole in the ice here. And we have to be very careful because from here, the beaver's home is quite far as we swim. So... And Grunty pretty much tells us that uh, the water is dangerous and it brings down our air meter twice as fast, just like in uh, Rusty Bucket Bay. But 
you'll be able to make it. And you just come up here to the very top. And you're back in here. And <laughs> the beaver uh, says that he doesn't get visitors in the winter. But up here on the top shelf, you get yourself the fifth honeycomb piece. So if you're wondering beforehand, uh, there was only, we only had two because uh, for some reason in Clanker's Cavern, it didn't count that I got the two of the uh, honeycomb pieces. So I had to go back and grab them. So I don't know why they didn't count, unfortunately, but I went back and got them. So we are properly in on the right track now. So this one will be the sixth one that we grab. So don't worry. I, I was a bit confused too at that point, but I'm going to go ahead and make my way back and I can show you where this last honeycomb piece of the game is, which is also in winter and it involves flying. So the easiest place to actually start flying is this flying platform that's right in front of Mumbo's hut in the winter time. And it's a lot safer to get to because the bramble has been frozen over and there's a lot of snow in this area. So what you want to do is you want to just fly. Make sure you have enough feathers for this as well, because it is quite important. Because we need to make it to the squirrel's house again, because there was one window in the autumn that you could break open because there's a, a walkway that leads you up to it. But in this, in winter, well, throughout any of the seasons, there's a window that you can't reach until the winter, because you need to be able to fly and do Kazooie's dash attack, which you could technically do as well from, from that platform that's behind me. But I find it to be easier just to do it from Mumbo since it's the quickest way and it's the closest place from when you enter. Also, it could be a little tricky from the way that I'm doing it, but it is a bit easier to do it from the method I'm doing from above and then jumping in instead of trying to just fly into it, but it's it's up to you and how you want to do it. But in here, this is a hidden room with a lot of nuts and enemies, so we need to get rid of them so they don't become a hindrance. But look! We finally got the last honeycomb piece. Oh, there's a notification that came up. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. But we got the last honeycomb piece. I cannot believe it. And guess what? We have nine pieces, nine hits that we can take. So this is going to make fighting Gruntilda much easier. I cannot tell you how long it took me to make this because I had to make a new profile and I had to go through the entire game again. And I did do 100% for it as well. I did everything before actually grabbing the honeycombs and finding them. So please leave a like on this video because it really took quite a bit for me to do this. I only did this within a day's time, but the amount of hours put into it, it definitely did take a lot longer than I anticipated. But any of, you know, any of your guys' support would be much appreciated. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to leave that like button, as I said. And don't forget to hit subscribe as well. That helps me out too. It lets me know you guys enjoy the content on the channel and would like to see more. But I can't believe it. <laughs> All honeycomb pieces. I have been Savvy, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Actually, in the finale. Bye, guys. See you later.